Welcome everyone. My name is Don Pinto and I'm a technical product marketing manager at Red Hat. If you're wondering how to move your Red Hat Enterprise Linux workloads to the cloud, you have come to the right session. And today I'll discuss about moving to none other than the Azure cloud with image builder tool available in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So let's get started. Now there are various reasons why you may want to move to the cloud. Sometimes it's just about reducing the cost of your existing apps. Other times it may be just modernization of your existing IT environment. Whether you're building a new service, modernizing an existing app, running in containers, or you're just an ISV, you need a solid operating system platform to standardize your workloads across your deployment footprints, whether it's physical, virtual, private, public clouds, or out to the edge. With Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you can standardize your workloads in this hybrid cloud environment. Simplicity, consistency, and repeatability are key elements of the solution when it comes to moving your workloads to the cloud. In this journey, creating the image is the first step with Red Hat's image builder technology, you can build standardized images, configure them and customize them as you want and quickly deploy them in a variety of cloud and virtualized environments. Now you can also use RHEL image builder with other tools in your environment like satellite. Imagine building an image with RHEL image builder and then using satellite to provision it across multiple hosts at scale. You can also use Ansible to automate your journey through the deployment, maintenance, upgrade, or retirement phases. And with Red Hat Insights that is included with every RHEL subscription, you can get deeper, identify and remediate risks across security, compliance, and configuration areas based on Red Hat's best practices. The image builder depends on multiple key concepts. And in this slide, we'll talk about image types and blueprints. Image types are outputs of the image builder tool. In this case, we support a variety of different cloud and virtualized environments. And for this session, the Azure disk image or the VHD format is of great importance. We also have blueprints that provide customizations, including setting up users, which packages to use, which services to run, and so forth. Now, if you're running in edge scenarios, Red Hat Image Builder can also help. With Red Hat Image Builder, you can generate purpose-built images for these environments. We use a technology called Greenboot that is able to generate OS3 RPM images. This effectively means a couple of things. Number one, you can get started within minutes using built-in defaults. Number two, you can get atomic updates and rollback capabilities if things go wrong, which is very crucial for edge environments. Number three, if edge environments are running in low bandwidth scenarios, you can get optimized over the air updates. And number four, it's designed for containerized edge environments so that you can quickly spin up containers when needed to scale. So in the next few minutes, let's go over a demo so that you can see in action Red Hat Image Builder and how you can build images that are customized as per your requirement and push them to none other than the Microsoft Azure Cloud. When it comes to moving workloads to the cloud, simplicity, consistency, and repeatability are the key elements of your solution. The first steps in this wonderful journey to the cloud is to create an image. With the image builder technology in Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you can have a standardized way to configure and create custom images and quickly deploy them in the cloud environments of your choice. 
Let me show you today how you can do that with RHEL's image builder technology and Microsoft Azure Cloud. So what you can see on the screen here is the RHEL Web Console. For those of you not familiar with Web Console, it is an easy to use web-based tool so that any system administrator can quickly take a look at what's going on in the system. From health to usage metrics to general system information, the Web Console is your friend. So let's talk about image builder more. And you can see on the left menu here under apps is we can see that we have an image builder item. So let's select that. There are multiple concepts related to image builder, but it all starts with creating a blueprint. A blueprint is like a template providing customization packages that you could pick from to create, to include in your image, as well as image output formats. In this case, I have a very simple customization to create a user called ZZTest. In terms of packages, I've also selected just a single package, the Apache web server package. However, you can choose to add more packages if you wish by typing in the name of the package, version number, or release. Finally, you need to tell Image Builder what is the output format of your images. But before we do that, let's quickly look at the setup in the Microsoft Azure portal. So here you can see that I'm in the Microsoft Azure portal. I've logged in and I have a subscription associated to my account, which is my Azure sub. I also have a storage account, which is associated with the subscription. In this case, my image store one. And inside this my image store one storage account, I have a container, which I've called my image container one. So those are some of the things that we will need in the next step to input in the RHEL web console. We also see on the left that we have something called access keys. These are keys that allow you to access your particular storage account. So I'm going to hit show keys to reveal the keys that I need to use so that RHEL's image builder can write the output image into this particular storage account. Okay, so I'm going to copy that over. And let's go back to RHEL's image builder. I'm going to select the output image format in this case to be the Azure disk image. I'm going to tell Image Builder to upload the image to Azure. I'm going to give it the access key that I copied. And I'm going to give it the name of my storage account, which is my image store one. Next, next, I'm going to give it the name of the image that I want to write into the Azure container. And also tell it the name of my storage container. So now that I've input all this information, I'm going to hit finish and let Image Builder do its job. You can see that the Image Builder in RHEL has added the image creation and image upload to a queue, and the job 
to build the image and upload the image has started. Now that the image is getting built and uploaded, let us explore a few more things inside the RHEL web console. A good place to start is to look at the system overview section again. We'll dig a little bit more into the usage graphs. What you can see here is how I'm utilizing the four CPUs that I have on the system, memory and swap memory, disk IO, as well as network. The network section is very interesting in this case because as images are getting pushed to the cloud, you should see a few more spikes in the network traffic. Let's come back to the web console in a few more minutes after the image is pushed to the cloud. And so welcome back. Back at inside the RHEL web console, and we can see that the image build and the image upload task has been completed. Let's actually go and verify that in the Azure portal. So again, you're inside the My Image Store one, which is our storage account in Azure. And again, within that, I have a container which is called My Image Container one. So let us go and explore that container. And what we can see in this case is we have the VHD image file, My Image one, which is now available inside this container. By clicking on the image inside the image container, we can get a few more details about the image. One of the most interesting attribute is the URL of the image in the blob store. So we're gonna copy that over and we're gonna show how we can spin up a virtual machine in Azure from this particular image that was pushed into the Azure cloud. And for that, I'm gonna switch back to the RHEL machine and we'll explore the Azure CLI. So what I've done here is I've already installed the Azure CLI tools for Linux. In this case, it's running on RHEL. And so the first command that I'm gonna show you is the az login command. And so this command essentially uses the CLI to basically log in to Azure. So let's try to do that. You'll see that it opens a browser window. You might have to pick your account here. And once you have successfully logged into Azure, you can return back to the console. So in this case, you can see that I'm back to the console. It's kind of telling me uh, a bunch of different details associated with my account. I'm also gonna tell of my subscriptions that are tied to this particular account. So for that, you can see, you can use the AZ account list command and output it in the form of a nice, nicely formatted table. So you can see that I have two subscriptions, um, but in this case, we're using the My Azure sub subscription. And this particular subscription has a unique subscription ID that is associated with this particular subscription. So we're gonna use that subscription ID in the next CLI command. So I'm gonna, again, set a particular subscription ID. If you have multiple subscriptions, you might want to use this command to pick a particular subscription to go against. So in this case, um, I'm gonna use the subscription ID tied to my, my Azure sub subscription. And now that is set. What I'm gonna do next is show you the command to basically create a VM uh, based on uh, the image that we already had uploaded. So in this case, it is the AZ VM create command. 
Uh, we're telling it to create an image with a particular name, particular resource group, um, and, uh, and go with that. So let's run this particular command. And so what you'll see here is this command has started running. Um, it will go over the network to create a new virtual machine with the image that we just pushed into Azure. We can look at, go back to home and try to look at virtual machines. You may not immediately see a virtual machine up. In this case, yes, it is. Uh, it's already up there. Um, and this particular VM is created and is, is running with that particular disk image that we had uploaded. Uh, let's again go back to uh, our console to kind of see that. And you can see that that uh, VM is now up and running uh, with the disk image. So I hope you enjoyed this demo of how to build a new image that is customized to meet your use cases push the image to a cloud environment, in this case, the Microsoft Azure Cloud. Thank you.